So let's begin by talking about dapaglifazone. Difficult to pronounce, um, so we tend to sort of shorten it sometimes to dapa just to make it a little bit easier to talk about, but we'll use the full name today of dapaglifazone. So it's an SGLT2 inhibitor. It's a sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor, so that's its full name, so I'm glad they shortened it to something more pronounceable. So it's a serendipitous story, so it, it happens sort of by chance, really. Um, so the medication itself um, was from um, some uh, research that was done where it was used um, in people with uh, diabetes. So type 2 diabetes was where it was first prescribed. And they looked at sort of cardiac outcomes. So they looked at patients with a cardiac history. And it unexpectedly demonstrated um, quite a significant um, reduction in those patients with coronary vascular disease and heart failure in reduction in them going into hospital um, for heart failure. So they realised that this diabetic medication had quite a profound effect um, for people that had also got, um, so it was, it was coronary vascular disease, so atherosclerotic vascular disease who were also treated with, um, with an SGLT2 inhibitor. Um, there are two additional ones, there's um, panoglyphosone, um, th that study was empaglyphosone, and then there's also dapaglyphosone, which we're talking about. So they've now been studied in large cardiovascular trials and research clinical trials. So gapaglyphosone, it, its branded name is far ixga it's a drug used to treat people um, with type 2 diabetes initially, um, and now it was then it was studied after the initial research study um, in the DAPA heart failure study. And it did show ad, um, outstanding benefits of people with heart failure. So for most people, this will be in addition to their usual medication, so an ACE inhibitor, beta blocker, plus a mineral corticoid receptor antagonist and or diuretic so they might be on diuretics as well. Um, some people may be on interest instead of ACE inhibitors or ARBs. So how does it work? It works on your kidneys. It increases the amount of sugar removed from your body when you pass urine. So that's obviously why it was a really good drug and why it was being used and it was licensed for diabetes, type 2 diabetes. And the results of the DAPA heart failure trial showed that there was a, a huge improvement for people in quality of life if they had a diagnosis of heart failure. It reduced the likelihood of them needing to go into hospital with heart failure, so it kept people out of hospital. Um, and for some people, they actually slowed the progression of their heart failure. Um, you know, with that, with chronic heart failure, it actually slowed the progression of that condition. Um, so further research studies with dapaglyphosone are the DELIVER study, um, which was heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction, and then DETERMINE, um, which was a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. Um, and they've also been studying dapaglyphosone um, in people with a chronic kidney disease as well. So the timelines for dapaglyphosone were in May 2020. The American approval um, came in um, for treatment of heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction in adults without diabetes. NICE guidance was published on the 24th of February 2021, so a little bit behind the American guidance. Um, and how does it work? Um, so likely that it, it's removing sugar um, and that's associated with removal of fluid. Um, so it also helps um, in, in the glomerular in the kidneys, so a special area in the kidneys. Um, it helps with um, reducing hyperfiltration. Um, it also helps with the renin-angiotensin system, which is a very complex system. Um, and they also feel that there's a possibility that the special mechanisms that are in play that help with, with the cardiomyocytes, so the little the cells within the cardiac muscle. So they, they feel, and I don't think they've got 100% proof yet, but I might be wrong, that it actually helps with anti-inflammatory and anti-fibrotic properties within um, those cells of the heart. So again, there's probably multiple reasons why it helps people with a diagnosis of heart failure. So I mentioned the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. 
Um, and these are two screenshots um, of guidance around apoglifazone. So NICE is a public body of the Department of Health in England. It publishes guidelines in four different areas. So clinical practice, so guidance on appropriate treatment of care for people with specific conditions and diseases, and also guidance for social care service um, users, services, sorry, and users. Um, so NICE have recommended dapagliflozone as part of the standard treatment of adult patients with a symptomatic chronic heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction as part of their standard, so normal care. And then dapagliflozone NICE guidance um, with preserved or mildly reduced ejection fraction has been published in draft form and full guidance is awaited. So how do how is dapagliflozone prescribed? So it's usually up to a target dose of 10 milligrams a day. Um, advice around um, starting it, um, once people have started it, is to check their kidney function and just monitor that regularly. So that might be the GP, it might be the specialist nurses, or it might be a heart failure nurse. Um, so card, the SGLT2 inhibitors, so dapagliflozone, um, is renal protective, so it does help to protect the kidneys. Um, if somebody's diabetic, then they would be advised to monitor their glucose levels um, periodically. Um, and also they may need to change some of their diabetic medications. Um, fluid balance, so just keeping an eye on people's input and output. So just making sure that people aren't becoming, um, uh, you know, extra fluid or also are becoming dehydrated as you know as in during the hot weather so there is a possibility of dehydration especially at this time of year lower blood pressure lower blood sugars um, and also um, there's probably been things that, that have been read around um, having fungal infections so genital urinary infections um, and that was one of the most common reasons for discontinuation when in the research studies that were published. Um, so advice around that, if anyone you know, does have any concerns around a um, UTI infection or um, infection um, you know, that's affecting them, then certainly they'd be advised to contact their heart failure nurse or primary care team. With this medication, as with others, if you miss a dose, take it as soon as you remember. But if it's time for the next dose, then don't take two doses together. If you take too much, so if you double dose yourself or you've realised that you've taken more than you should, then obviously let the 111 service know within, within the UK. Generally well tolerated for many people. Um, and research that was published in the British Journal of Cardiology in January 23, it was a small scale trial, um, but they did look at the initiation of dapagliflozone and they found it to be safe, generally well tolerated. And they actually found that many people who started on it and were on dapagliflozone had their diuretic therapy either reduced or stopped in some circumstances. And that allowed them to increase potentially some of their other heart failure medications. So it was a small trial, but that's obviously, um, you know, potentially important for um, population. Um, but it may not be generalizable to all populations with heart failure. So empagliflozone is the other um, SGLT2 inhibitor, which is um, nice um, recommended uh, for treatment for chronic heart failure. So that came out of um, a research trial, as I say, clinical research again. Um, that was the Emperor Reduced, and that was the second large scale um, heart failure trial after DAFA HF. And that investigated the effects of empagliflozone on cardiovascular um, outcomes. So on, you know, how people were who had cardiovascular conditions that had caused their heart failure. Um, so certainly, um, you know, again, adult dose, 10 milligrams once a day, by mouth with or without food. Um, common side effects um, similar to dapagliflozone can include a bladder infection or vaginal infection in women. Um, other potential side effects include frequent urination, dizziness and lightheadedness, um, so potentially, and constipation if somebody becomes a little bit dehydrated and thirst. Um, so advice really, as before, is to tell your heart failure nurse or GP if you're concerned about any um, side potential side effects. 
Um, if you're urinating less than usual, have an unusual dry mouth or an increased thirst, feeling dizzy or lightheaded or fainting, then to let, um, let the GP know urgently or again, 111 service. Again, same advice around a, a missed dose, um, take it as soon as you remember, but if it's next, you know, you're due to take your next dose, then don't double up on doses. And again, nice guidance. So we've just got one nice guidance here. Um, again, for um, chronic heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction. So it is recommended as an option for treating um, symptomatic chronic heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction again in adults, um, used as an add on to standard care, which would be an ACE inhibitor, ARB, or Entresto uh, with a beta blocker if tolerated, an MRA, um, uh, so, you know, standard for pillar therapy. Um, so, can be started um, and usually well tolerated. And I think there's guidance um, around starting that earlier than perhaps has been historically. Um, so certainly it's been um, you know, discussed about being an add-on treatment um, once people are established on um, the first line of treatment, ACE, beta blocker and MRA. Um, so preserved or mildly reduced ejection fraction. So again, Nice guidance is in development, and that's expected to be published on the 21st of June 2023. So again, um, you know, guidance for both in, um, in people that have a good pumping uh, function of their heart um, or a slightly reduced pumping um, function of their heart will certainly be um, forthcoming. So controlling your symptoms is an important part of treating your condition. Um, and Cardiomyopathy UK have um, historically produced a symptom diary and that's about to be relaunched in a, in a new format. So you can note down any symptoms you've got. It's easier then when you go to your heart failure nurse or specialist nurse or cardiac nurse um, so that they're aware of symptoms. Um, again, you know, certainly if you're on medications for heart failure, then having a symptom diary can be useful to refer to. Um, so if you are obviously concerned about any symptoms, then let your primary care team know. Um, if you started on new medications, such as um, the SGLT2 inhibitors, so dapagliflozone or empagliflozone, um, certainly I'd advise finding out who to speak to if you've got any concerns around symptoms, who will support you. So some people will start on a lower dose and increase um, their dose um, over a period of time. Um, and who will be checking sort of your kidney function, who will be checking um, you know, that your blood pressure is okay. So it's certainly advised to ask those questions um, when you're prescribed medication so that you're aware of who to go to. And obviously the Cardiomyopathy UK um, specialist nurses are here to advise and sign post-due. 